Okay guys, let's go through this tutorial for the conveyor that we just built. Um, so what I've got first is my I.O. table right here. Uh, so you can take a screenshot of this, so stop the video here and take a screenshot. Or the in the comment section below, uh, there's a PDF version of this same I.O. and with this program that I built up over on the side. Okay, so I've got to first connect up to my, uh, my Siemens PLC. So again, I'm clicking here going to Siemens 1200 and then I'm hitting connect and we need to see a green light here. Beautiful. That means that I'm now communicating with my PLC. I'm going to go back to my main window and I'm going to put it into the run mode. And here's that same animation that we just built up. So we've got to get this palette to go from here over to the turntable, turn 90 degrees and then move along this conveyor here and come to a stop when it hits this final uh, diffuse sensor here. So the first thing we need to do is um, on the front face of this guy, we've got a start stop station. And I've set this up so that when it's in the, the stop mode, you can see that both of these red lights are illuminated. When I hit the start push button, then I want this green light to turn on right here. So you can see that um, on each of these guys, there are two tags. Let me just zoom in here. So we have the, the start button and the start button light and the stop button and the stop button light. So these are inputs here, the stop and start button, and then each of the lights are individual outputs. Okay, so I want the green light to turn on on the start push button when I hit the start. And I'd also like this green light to turn on on the stack here. Okay, once I hit that green light, I need this conveyor to start up and start moving that pallet along. So let's start off here. I've got individually, I've got the stop and the start push buttons. These are two inputs, input 0.0, .0 for the stop, input 0.0, .0 for the start. And that matches, my PLC program matches with my IO table here that I see in my drivers. So you can see here that the stop is the first one and the start is the second one. Uh, if anybody's used this program, uh, the, the factory IO, and if you figured out a way to make this larger, I can just see it with my eyes. Um, but my colleagues can't, uh, can't see some of these uh, names because they're so faint and so small. Just wondering if there's a way to zoom in on it. All right, so we'll go back here. Once we hit the start push button, then that's going to turn on this bit right here. And this bit right here is a, a memory bit. So it's M0.0. .0. It's an internal memory bit to the PLC. It doesn't control anything outside of the PLC. It just simply changes from a 0 to a 1 when it's true and allows us to use it in a number of places within the, the program, uh, but doesn't turn on anything external to the PLC. So I'm using this as a, a standard three wire. There's my stop, my start, my holding contact here is addressed the same as this output right here. So when this one goes to a one, I'm using an XIC to look for the presence of a one, and that'll provide another path of logic to keep this guy on when I let go of the start push button. That ready to run is gonna turn on um, this bit right here. So when this is true, this is looking for uh, a one. And so when this is a one, then my green light will turn on on my stack and the start push button green light will turn on as well. Okay, if I am in the stop mode, which you can see right now, um, the logic is stopping right here at the start push button. Remember, this is not the path of current, it's the path of logic. So this one right now is looking for a one, the stop is normally closed and providing a one in the memory. Uh, but over here, this M0.0, .0, this internal memory bit is, is a zero. I'm using an expression, an, an expression right here called XIO or examine if open or examine if off. And this is off, so this is true. So you can see that my red light and my stop push button light are illuminated right now. Okay, again, when I hit that ready to run by pressing that start, then it will then um, turn on my conveyor. So you can see that when the ready to run is true, uh, not only will it turn on the green lights, but it will turn on this circuit right here. And you can see that diffuse sensor two, which is, let me just go back to this side right here. Diffuse sensor two is this guy right here. Let's just zoom in. And you can see that it is um, a one right now. When it's you can see here, this is a, a zero because it's white. And when this is tripped off, then this is a one. So you can see that this is true. 
And diffuse sensor one is this guy right here. Let's just zoom out. There we go. So this, sorry, this guy right here, sorry, the mouse just went off the page here. Uh, this one is diffuse sensor one. So as long as the palant hasn't come and tripped off that diffuse sensor, um, then we're good to go to turn on the conveyor. So the diffuse sensor is a zero right now. We're looking for the presence of zero. So this is true, you can see it's green. And this guy is true as well, you can see it's green as well. So all we're left with in logic continuity is the ready to run turning from a zero to a one. Once the conveyor turns on, then there's a holding contact here that is addressed the same as this output. This conveyor is an actual output, so we have to fire on output number four. And that output number four corresponds again to uh, my I.O. here. So if you're looking at your I.O. table that you printed out, uh, output number four is right here, and that's our roller conveyor number one. Okay, so let's fire this guy up and have a look at um, what happens to this circuit. So I just got to look over here so I can... There we go. Beautiful. So let me just scroll back a touch and we can see the pallet moving. Um, and it looks like once it gets to that limit switch right here, that diffuse sensor, then the pallet will block the light and this will no longer be true and the conveyor will turn off. Let me just change the, uh, the sizing here so we can... Let's try 90% and see if we can get everything um, just enough. Okay, beautiful. Um, so now we're in, we're already in the play mode here. So I'm going to hit the, the start push button. You'll see that this goes true. The ready to run goes true. The holding contact is true. The green lights turn on. This will no longer be true. The red lights will go off and the conveyor will keep running until it hits this diffuse sensor. Okay, hitting that push button right now. Come on. There we go. And now you can see that the diffuse sensor number one has been tripped and the conveyor comes to a stop. Now I have to hit uh, the stop push button and then reset. Otherwise, if I reset it, it'll just keep going because it was latched in there. Um, now this one, this program also comes with a, a slow motion. Um, it's really slow. I haven't been able to figure out how to, if you can change the timing of the, the slow motion. So this guy right here uh, runs the simulation in slow motion. So I'm not sure if I can change the timing of that because it's really slow. Uh, but have a look. So I'm going to hit this push button once more. Uh, you'll see that the red lights go out. So these guys will no longer be true. The green lights will turn on. The ready to run will be on. And the conveyor will turn on until it hits this one. And right when it gets to there, then this will no longer be true. And it will turn off my conveyor. Okay, hitting that push button now. Yeah, it's really slow, um, but it's cool because you can see everything going on. Ready to run is there. Two green lights are illuminated. Red lights are off. Conveyor is obviously on until it hits here. And this one right here will be no longer true. And that will turn off my conveyor. Cool, eh? Now, the problem is, is that that's great. We've gotten the, the pallet to get to this point, but we need it to keep going to get onto this turntable. So we need something else to keep pushing this conveyor on for a little bit longer. So we can't just have it turn off exactly when it hits this sensor. We need to uh, change our program a little bit in order to get the pallet to keep moving on to this turntable. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so let me show you how I got around that. I mean, there's a million ways to do this. It's just the way that um, I figured to do it. Um, but I put in another rung here. So let me highlight uh, maybe right here. Okay, uh, so new rung and then I put uh, my diffuse center. And so I have an XIC for my diffuse center. And I'm gonna label that. So I'm going to double click on that guy. And then I can choose here. And I've already put my IO here. So this was uh, diffuse sensor one. So I'm gonna use this guy, my input 0 0.2, okay, and I'll hit enter. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in uh, a timer now. Let me just, uh, give me two seconds. I'm gonna turn off this simulator because my computer is really slow.
Okay, so hopefully that makes it a little bit faster. So, um, so we needed the the conveyor to keep on for a couple of seconds, right? So I chose to use uh, an on delay timer. So again, your instructions are here. Um, if you use like something like this for a ton all the time, you can grab this guy and bring it over and drop it in here, and then it's available whenever you want, right? So that's really cool. You can drop it in and have your your most used instructions on the top here. So. Again, I'm going to highlight right here, and I'm going to drop in an on delay timer. There we go. Uh, I'm going to have an automatic rather than manual. Okay. Uh, my preset, I only need it on for a couple seconds, so I just chose to have it on for two seconds. Remember, the, the setting for this is in milliseconds. So here, if we hit two, it says two milliseconds. So we've got to go back and change that to seconds. Okay. This is just our accumulated time and this is our output here uh, and the output here I had going to um, a memory bit so I had, I had previously used a memory bit up here m0.0 um, and so I just chose the next sequential memory bit so I'm going to put an output there but it's not a real output it is a virtual output so I used uh, this guy m0.1 so let's just scroll down there where is that bad boy Oh, I haven't created it yet. Okay, so let's put that in there. Uh, so percent uh, m zero dot one. There we go. Okay, uh, and to label that guy, I'm gonna right click on this percent m zero dot one. So I'm right clicking, then I'm going to rename tag, um, and I need to rename, interesting, it didn't bring me to that specific bit. So be careful there that it doesn't bring you to the right one. But this guy right here, I don't want it to say tag zero one. I need to say uh, the diffuse, um, how did I say this? I just said diffuse sensor one was tripped. Okay. There we go. Uh, and now I've got a memory bit that I can use up here. So. Before, remember that this diffuse sensor just turned off the conveyor. Now when the diffuse sensor um, is true, it's going to turn on this timer and two seconds later this memory bit is going to trip. I'm going to use that memory bit instead of the diffuse sensor, the actual diffuse sensor here. So I'm going to change this to percent %m0.1. I'm double clicking again and I can find my IO there and double click again and I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, let's download this to the PLC. I'll get my simulator up and running. We'll see how that changes our program. Okay, beauty. So I've downloaded those changes to my PLC. I'm obviously in the run mode because you can see um, that I have logic continuity. Let me just reset my uh, animation here. Um, so the diffuse sensor number one has not been tripped. Diffuse sensor two has been tripped, showing that the um, palette is right there. So we should find now, hopefully, that the palette moves forward and instead of stopping right here, it moves a little bit more until it gets onto this uh, turntable here. Okay, so we're hitting the the start push button. I've got that up here. We already know how a lot that portion of the program works. We're just primarily looking at this guy right here. Um, why don't I put it into uh, slow motion here and we'll watch this guy work. Okay, so you can see that it's coming up to uh, the diffuse sensor number one. Previously, it stopped right there. But when that diffuse sensor is tripped, then the timer will start to time out. So we're looking for this to be true. There we go, it's true, it's starting to time out. Once it gets to two seconds, um, then it turned off the conveyor there. So still happened fast in slow motion, but you can see that the palette has now moved on. And now I can grab it with this next roller conveyor on the turntable. Okay, let's see it one time in uh, real time here. Reset our animation here. Beautiful. Okay, so kept running for a little bit. So now all we need to do is get this conveyor on and then it'll just keep be, being able to continue. Um, and go on to this turntable and we'll have to make use of some type of limit switch over here maybe that capacitor sensor um, to make sure that it doesn't go right off of the uh, the turntable all right let's do that now guys okay so now we need to get this roller conveyor working on this turntable so 
when this diffuse sensor is tripped, I want to also turn this guy on. So let me show you the, the tags that are here. Um, so I have turntable positive and turntable roll negative. So the positive is for the forward direction, the negative is for um, the reverse direction. Uh, so I need to go in the forward direction, turntable roll positive. And when it gets to this front limit switch, which is a, which is a capacitive sensor, uh, if you don't know how a capacitive sensor works, it works in that uh, the dielectric is air above this right now. Once the pallet goes on top of it, then it changes the dielectric from air to the wood and then trips off this capacitive sensor, which you're going to use as a limit. So I need the diffuse sensor to turn on the turntable roll plus. Uh, and then when it gets to this front limit, I'd like this turntable roll plus to turn off. Okay, so in order to do that, let's uh, look at our TIA portal here. Okay, so uh, we're going to drop in another rung here. So let's highlight this side rung here. Let's drop in another rung. Okay, and what did I use? I used that diffuse sensor uh, number one again. So I need an XIC and I'll say when that is tripped and becomes a one. So again, diffuse sensor number one, uh, but not the memory bit because the memory bit turns on after two seconds. I need the actual diffuse sensor. Where is that? There we go. So there's my input right there. Okay. And when that guy turns on, um, I'd like it to turn on the roller in the positive direction. So my output is here. Uh, now I've already determined all of my inputs and outputs uh, as I went through. So I can just grab them. So I need the uh, the roller. Oh, this again, this looks like a uh, previous version of my other uh, program. So let me drop in another um, input there on my roller in the positive. Let's see which um, input that one actually is. Looks like you can just make it out. It looks like Q0.5 is a turntable uh, roller in the positive direction. So we're going to put uh, percent. And then Q, well, 0 0.5, and hit enter. Okay. Again, this doesn't have a tag. I can right click on this. Hello. I can right click on this guy, um, and I can rename the tag. And for that guy, for Q 0 0.5, um, I'm going to label that turn table. What's going on? Turn table roll uh, in the positive direction. Excellent. Okay, I need it to turn on until I hit that limit. So I'm going to use an XIO. So as long as the, um, where did I just put that? Okay, hopefully I didn't put that in some random spot. Um, I'm going to put an XIO right there. Okay, and that guy right there is going to be the capacitive limit at the end. And I know off of my IO table that's in front of me that that's going to be percent input 0 0.4 okay i don't have that one labeled yet so i'm going to right click on that guy rename the tag and for that guy i'm going to what did i i said turntable limit front beautiful okay um, as each of these guys are changed then if i go to my plc view here like that was input uh, 0 0.4, and I increase this to 400%, um, then each of these guys should be changing as I go. So there's my, um, my output for turntable roll uh, plus. Interesting that uh, my inputs haven't come in, uh, but they will come in uh, eventually. Okay. The other th cool thing that I, I just uh, figured out is that you can do a, um, a window and you can split these guys vertically. And it's really cool, check this out. So now I can look at my program and I can look at my tags on my PLC. Computer's running just a little bit slow right now, uh, but really cool, eh? I was floating this earlier, but the best way to do this uh, is to go into the window and then um, split them vertically there. Okay, so we'll unsplit the editor space now and go back to 
our main OB1. There we go. Okay, so that's cool. Um, and I think that's basically it. So now let's see how that changes our program. Okay, just before I show you that, I just remembered while I was loading that up. When we go back to uh, our PLC view right here, uh, the inputs are not changing because take a look at uh, the input tags. I have 10.0, 10.1, 10.2. Um, and if I look at my tags on this guy right here for my factory IO, they are uh, 0, 1, 2. So um, I just remembered that I have offset my inputs here by 10 in order for that factory IO to work. So it's negating my physical inputs. So I put push these guys to 10 uh, in order that I can make use of the virtual inputs on the actual PLC. Okay, so let's go back to our main OB1. Uh, so now we've got the uh, the diffuse center, which is gonna turn on the timer, uh, which is then gonna turn on this memory bit, which is going to kick out our conveyor. Uh, but when the diffuse sensor is stripped, it's also going to turn on the, the turntable. Um, and then once it gets to that front limit, then hopefully we'll turn off that, that turntable roller in the positive direction. Okay, let's bring up our simulator here. Okay, and so we'll hit the, the green button. I'm already in the, in the online version here. So let me hit this green button and for the start and we'll see what happens now. Okay, that was cool in that it actually got it onto the rollers a little bit more. Um, but this was supposed to go all the way to this limit and then stop. But it stopped prior to that. Why did it stop prior to... Oh, it looks like that diffuse sensor right there is no longer true. And in this logic continuity, that guy needs to be true in order for this guy to stay on. Okay, so the way around that that I've done is I've put another holding contact across here so that the turntable will stay on. So the diffuse sensor will turn it on and then I'll have a holding contact address the same as this turntable in parallel with the diffuse sensor. And then the front, the turntable limit front will be able to stop it. Okay, so let's make that change because uh, right now if we reset, obviously we're not all the way to this limit so we need to keep that roller positive on for a little bit longer. And the thing that's actually turning it off is the sensor that turned it on right here, diffuse sensor number one, which is this diffuse sensor here. Okay, so let's stop. Let's drop in that, uh, that holding contact and see how that changes everything. Okay, so let's drop in another rung there. Uh, let's use an XIC so that when this is on, it'll be a one. We're examining that it's a one. Um, I wonder if I can grab, oh cool, I can grab this and bring it right up there, okay? And we're gonna label this guy the same as Q0.5. There we go. Looks good. Okay, let's download that bad boy. Okay, so let's see how that changes things on our simulator now. We're gonna hit the start push button now. Nice, nice, ah, sweet. Okay, when it got to that capacitive sensor, then it's able to stop. Right on, okay, so we're getting there. Let's hit the stop. We'll watch that, because that was kind of cool. Nice to have something uh, working the way that you want to. Sweet, okay, so now we've stopped it there. The next thing to do is move this guy 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, we're going to make use of this to turn table limit 90. So when it goes uh, 90 degrees, it's going to hit this limit here. So we're going to have to make use of that probably at some point. Um, the thing that actually drives this is, let's see, uh, right here. We can see this turn table one turn. Okay, so we're going to make use of that next in our program. Okay, so once we get to... Uh, this front limit, this turntable front limit, which is, let's check out our I.O. table, turntable front limit is uh, input 0 0.4. Okay, so we'll keep input 0 0.4 in mind. So we'll add another rung in here. 
and we'll drop in input 0 0.4. Okay, and then we've got to label this guy because we haven't labeled that guy yet. Okay, sorry, I brought that in uh, right here. Okay, so that's already been used. Beautiful. So that is now going to turn on this turntable turn. And if we go to our IO table again, that is output number six. So Q0.6. Okay, so we'll put an output there. And we'll label that guy Q0.6. Okay, that one doesn't have a tag, uh, so let's right click on this guy. Let's go up to rename the tag. And that guy was called Q0.6 turntable one turn. Okay. Easy now. Come on. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, let's see how that works. Let's drop that into the PLC now. Okay, so we've dropped that new rung on there. Um, we're now watching the PLC. We can see our logic continuity and which ones are actually true here. So anything that's green is true. Uh, let's hit this green push button to start it up and we'll see how far we get here. Hey, sweet. All right, so we got to that limit there, and once we were there, then we turned it 90 degrees. Okay, so now we need to turn on this conveyor on the turntable again, and this roller conveyor number three, in order for this guy to start moving across to our last point here. So let's go offline and do that now. Okay, so I want to turn on this turntable roll plus again, uh, but I want that to happen when I've hit this turntable Libit 90. So I'm going to put another rung right here. If I grab this guy right there. There we go. Okay. Uh, and we'll put an XIC. And once that guy is tripped, and I'm going to bring that right up here, I'm going to bypass all the other noise there. And I'm going to have that go right to the turntable roll plus. And that guy, uh, for my turntable limit, let's look at our IO table here. Uh, turntable limit is uh, input 0 0.5, okay? Okay, again, haven't given that guy a name yet, so we'll rename that guy. And for input 0 0.5, we're going to call that uh, turntable. I'm just going to go TT for turntable. So uh, turntable limit 90. Okay, so when that guy gets to that uh, limit switch, and I haven't used that anywhere else, right? Limit front. No, haven't used that at all. Okay, so let's see how that works. And so let's download that now. Okay, so it looks like we have just enough room here at 90% uh, zoom in that we can see most of the program now. So now when it gets to this turntable limit uh, 90, then it's gonna turn on that roller at the front. So let's turn on the start button and see how this guy works. Let's get rid of these tags here. Okay, sweet. That's pretty good so far. Um, this is still pushing it onto this conveyor. So, and it looks like it's pushed it enough now that we'll be able to grab it with this next conveyor. So, let me stop this so I can hear myself think. Let's reset this bad boy. Oh, but this guy's still running, right? So, that thing's held in. So, we'll need to find a way eventually to turn off that roller plus. Because even after I hit the stop, then this roller is still working there, okay? Uh, but we also need to turn on not only that turntable roll plus, but we need to turn on this roller conveyor number three. 
So let's add that in there and then we'll see if we can find a way to turn that off with one of these diffuse sensors here. Okay, so I want to make use of this turntable limit 90 one more time and turn on this other conveyor here. So I'm going, because if I start putting it in here, it's going to get too messy. So I'm going to use that input again over here. You can use the inputs as many times as you want. Okay, so I'll drop a rung in there and then I'll use that, what is that, input 0 0.5. So input 0 0.5. Okay, and when that guy is tripped, then I'd like to turn on, what is this, a roller conveyor number three. So I'm going to turn on my output, roller conveyor number three. And that guy, if we look at our I.O. table, uh, roller conveyor number three is Q0.7. Okay. I haven't given that guy a tag, so I'm going to right-click on there. I'm going to rename that tag, and that guy is going to be uh, conveyor number three. Beautiful. Okay, and I'd like that conveyor to be on until uh, this diffuse sensor here is tripped. So as long as that diffuse sensor has not been tripped, so I'm going to use an XIO. Come on, buddy. Oh, just a little bit of a lag there. Okay. And let's see, that diffuse sensor number five, again, on our IO table, diffuse sensor number five is input 0.6. Okay, that guy doesn't have a tag, so we're going to right-click, rename that bad boy. Somehow it didn't go right to it. Uh, so here we are right here. And that guy is diffuse sensor. Uh, what was that? Number five. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a look and see if we have everything. Okay, so when it gets to that turntable limit 90, it's going to turn on the conveyor. And it's going to keep the conveyor on until... Diffuse sensor five is uh, is tripped. That looks good. Okay, so let's download that and take a look at how that affects our program. Okay, so we've reset uh, the simulator here. Let's hit play. Well, oh, this thing's still running, and we've hit the stop button. Well, that's no good. We we got to fix this before we move on to see how the rest of that our changes here affected. We need something here, like we need to be able to. When we stop that ready to run, we need this conveyor to stop running. Let's fix that and then we'll come back. Hang on for two seconds. Okay, so I could put the ready to run here, here, and here, uh, but they're all in series with this line right here. So I'm going to put an XIC or an examine if on, and I'm going to look at my ready to run. And my ready to run was percent %m0.0. .0. Okay, so that's label this guy as percent m0.0 .0. okay beautiful let's download that bad boy and then hopefully when we hit the stop push button it'll stop that turntable conveyor from running okay beauty we can see right away with our plc program that we've provided that block in the logic to stop that turntable roll uh, conveyor working. So let's hit the, uh, the simulator here. Let's turn this guy on. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. So it hasn't turned on yet. So let's hit, let's scroll down here. Easy now. We want to be here. Let's see if we can get everything into the picture here. Okay, not bad. Okay, let's zoom in here a touch so we can see what's going on. Um, we're in the monitoring mode. We're seeing that um, once it hits that front limit, that it's going to turn the turntable on and turn it. Um, here, let's try and fit this in here as well. Hang on for a second. Okay, it looks good. So the diffuse sensor is going to turn on our roller plus. Uh, that'll go until we get to the front limit. Then we'll turn on the um, the front limit, turning on the turntable turn. Once it gets to 
the 90, then we're going to turn on the roll positive again. And when it gets to the 90, we're going to turn on the third conveyor here until we get to diffuse sensor number five. All right, let's see if everything's working here. Looks good. Right on. Whoa. Okay, so that was all right, but then this went back, which it's supposed to. It's supposed to go back to its rest state, waiting for the next pallet to come through. But it kind of caught the back end of this pallet there. And now conveyor three, which is this guy right here, is off. And this first conveyor is still on again, because we had this guy here. If I hit this stop button, I can actually turn off that conveyor. Um, but we'll have to have one of these diffuse sensors here turning that guy off. I don't know whether we'll use diffuse sensor 6 or diffuse sensor 5 yet. We'll have to see. Um, but we do have to find a way to keep conveyor 3 on um, as this is going back to its rest state. So we'll put in a little holding contact in here for the conveyor. So let's do that and see how that affects it. Okay, so once this limit turns on the conveyor, we need to keep that guy on for a while. So let's put in a rung here. And let's add a holding contact in parallel with it. We'll bring this guy up here. Nice. And then we'll label it the same as this conveyor number three, Q0.7. Okay, so long video, but it, you know, kind of walking you through my thinking um, and seeing how things are affecting the actual real world in the simulator. Um, as we make these changes. So let's download this guy and see whether the conveyor number three uh, stays on. Then we'll have to deal with turning that bad boy off as well. But let's do one thing at a time then. Okay, so we added this holding contact in there. So let's hit the start now. Looking good so far. There's the turn. Going ahead. Ah, yes. Sweet, I like it. Okay, so uh, we still have to turn this guy off, right? We can turn it off by hitting the stop, but that's no good. We need it to turn off on its own. So now the question is, when do we want this guy to turn off? Do we want it to turn off when it gets over here? Do we want it to get it to turn off before it turns back? I don't know, I don't know what the best design is gonna be. If I wait till this one's tripped, then as it's going back, then the, that front roller plus is still going to be on. If I try to make use of this diffuse sensor here, then it'll have a signal, but then when it goes past, the signal uh, will be lost again. I think I'm just going to use a timer. I think I'm just going to use a timer and keep this guy on for a couple of seconds and then turn it off. And I mean, this might be one of the places where you differ in, in uh, thought of the way that the program should be working compared to the way that I've had it set up here. But uh, let me go offline, let me drop that guy in and let's see how it works. Okay, so I want it here where I've got uh, this limit. Um, I'm gonna put another rung in right here. I'm gonna take a look at this TT limit 90 one more time. So now I've looked at it at one, two, three different points uh, in my program here. So that's input 0 0.5. Okay, it looks good. I'm going to bring an on delay timer on. Looks good. Um, I'm just going to keep this guy on for. I think two seconds was fine. I did two seconds here, so I'll do two seconds here as well. I have to put the two S again because remember the default is in milliseconds. And I'm just gonna have that turn on a memory bit. So let's see, uh, let's see, percent M zero. Uh, next one that I'm at is dot two. Okay, so I'll label that tag by right clicking on this guy. Uh, rename it there. And let's see, where's my, and there we go, M0.2. Okay, so this is my um, TT, my table turning limit, 90, but it's the timer output.
Okay. There we go. That's a mouthful, but that works for us. Okay. And then we're going to turn off that roller plus. So let's go up here to the roller plus. Um, thing that was holding it on was this holding contact right here. So I'm going to put an XIO. And as long as this guy hasn't timed out, this percent M0.2, then I'm good to go to keep that roller on. As soon as this is true, then it will turn this on and this will be false. And that will hopefully stop that roller table from keeping on. All right, so let's download that and see how that works now. Okay, so at this point, I think we've got everything that we need. Let's hit the, uh, the start button and we'll see it rock and roll in here. Ah, yes. All right, so it looks like everything's working here. Uh, let's walk through this program one more time, and then I'll run the animation one last time. So starting at the top here, when I hit the start push button, it'll turn on this memory bit, this ready to run memory bit, and it will be held on by this holding contact. That ready to run will turn on the green lights. It will turn off the red lights. Uh, as we scroll through here, the ready to run will also turn on the first conveyor, which is this guy right here, as long as the diffuse sensor 2, which is this bad boy right here, as long as that guy is seeing a pallet, it'll turn on this conveyor. It will keep that conveyor on until this diffuse sensor is tripped. And not only that that sensor is tripped, but it's going to give us an extra two seconds once this light beam is blocked. That two second timer will turn on this memory, the second memory bit, percent M0.1, and that's the one that's going to turn off the first conveyor. That'll allow the pallet to get onto here. Uh, once we hit the diffuse sensor as well, then it's going to turn on the turntable roll plus, which is this guy right here. So that will allow the pallet to keep moving forwards, and it'll keep moving forwards until it hits this sensor right here, uh, the turntable front limit, which is this right here. Okay, we found that this uh, turntable roller was still on, so we're able to turn it off when we hit the stop button as well. Okay, once it gets to the end, it gets to this front uh, turntable limit front, then we get to uh, this guy right here, and we're going to start turning the turntable. And once the turntable turns, uh, then we're going to hit this TT limit. And that TT limit is then going to turn on our final conveyor. So that's this guy right here. So the 90 limit right here, which is this guy right here. Once we get to the, the full 90 degrees, we're going to turn on this, the third conveyor, which is this guy right here. And we have a holding contact to keep that on. And it stays on until diffuse sensor 5 is tripped right here. Okay. We want it to have this go back to its rest state, so it will, but we needed to turn off this roller. So the last thing we did was um, in line with that turntable roll plus, we had that final output here, this percent M0.2 uh, from that limit here. So we had two second timer, an on delay timer, and finally this will turn off that turntable once it's returning back. Beautiful. All right. So. Uh, this is our main portion of the program right here. So I'll keep that uh, in sight and we'll run through this simulation one last time. Okay, so we'll hit this start button right here. Beautiful. All right, guys. Now, there are a number of ways that we could have done this. This is just the way that I uh, slowly and methodically came up with it. Um, so your job in class is would be to take this guy, get it going exactly the same as I have it right here, um, and then make some modifications. Or if you can see the modifications right away, then make, make your modifications and trying to get to do the same thing, to have the unit start at the beginning here, um, 
and then travel forwards when it gets to the next point to go 90 degrees to the left and then bring the pallet all the way out until we hit this final diffuse sensor right here. All right, guys, thanks for your patience there. Hopefully that helps in the building up of the program and you were able to look at the PDF that I have below in the comment section and you're keeping track of the IO table as well. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video.